Well, so uh, I've come to the engineering workshop that I had the head for the uh, Land Rover skimmed at. They were kind enough to um, uh, take a tiny amount of um, aluminium off of the head to make sure it was straight and level. Only then could it be pressure tested. Now when it was pressure tested, it failed the pressure test. There were a couple of valves that were um, leaking and uh, it was decided that the best course of action was to seek a replacement and that's what I've done. But um, Neil is uh, an engineer, probably been an engineer himself for uh, 30 or 40 years at least, but he took the business over from his father. So I reckon uh, in this little local engineering workshop there's at least a uh, hundred years of experience when it comes to um, engineering automotive parts. We were just talking about some of the things that can and cannot be done. So if you talk to uh, mainstream um, car manufacturers, they will tell you that um, um, from an engineering point of view, some parts can't be reworked and all the rest of it. But I guess when you've got 100 years experience of engineering and all of the equipment that uh, goes with that, um, the world is pretty much your oyster and there's probably not uh, a lot that can't be done. So um, my um, course of action really was uh, dictated because I didn't have a thousand quid to take the car to my uh, local uh, sort of 404 specialist and have it repaired. Probably, probably come to more than a thousand quid. So um, what I've tried to do is to save myself some uh, money by stripping the parts out. Once you've got the parts out, take them to um, someone like Neil. You know, I, I know nothing about um, engineering and I'm not a mechanic, you know. So uh, you take the part to, to the person with the expertise, get it assessed, repaired, replaced, whatever. But you can save yourself an awful lot of money doing that. The new head that I've got for the truck uh, costs £308 delivered. Uh, a little bit of money was spent trying to rework and save the old one, but um, uh, in the end that uh, couldn't be achieved. And um, consumables, you know, head gaskets, uh, exhaust manifold gaskets, water pump gaskets, all that sort of stuff. Um, engine oil, coolant, uh, they're all um, kind of... Uh, um, a cost you know that that has to go on the end of the uh, finished job but um, I think I've still probably spent my thousand quid but for that not only did I get the cylinder head uh, repaired replaced but I also got a complete new cooling system so uh, radiator water pump thermostat all the hoses so I have spent the money but I think I've got a lot more for it but I just thought, you know, bringing you uh, somewhere like this to your, you know, local um, automotive engineers would be a backhanded way of saving you an awful lot of money. We, we were just chatting and this gentleman's core business really is uh, local garages, main dealers uh, and uh, main agents, you know, so when you take your car to the garage to have it repaired, if there is an engineering problem, well guess what, they strip it out and they bring it to a place like this anyway. So uh, backhandedly I guess what I'm saying is it's an opportunity to um, cut out the middleman, save yourself an awful lot of money and have uh, at the end of the day exactly the same job done. But um, Neil's got some work that he's going to crack on with and uh, he's going to let us uh, watch exactly what's involved in uh, skimming a cylinder head. I just asked a, a silly question which was how do you know that the um, head is absolutely kind of flat and level when it was just explained to me but very simply the machine checks the head at kind of different levels so it might take a reading here another one on the back so it will take about three or four readings over the over the kind of level of the head and that enables the uh, the engineer to make sure that it's absolutely flat and level before they start to
I was just explaining that this is the kind of finish that we need across the whole head. So you can see, you know, some of it in these sort of areas here, just a little bit high. But the machine will keep going backwards and forwards until the whole head is uh, completely uh, straight and level. See, we're starting to get there now. There's a tiny little bit left. What we're doing now, apparently, is preparing the, yeah. the head yeah. for the final cut. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. if we cut much polish, it's yeah. really head. The, the metal doesn't stick. So there we are with the uh, kind of finished uh, skim and uh, I think you'll agree it looks a million dollars compared to uh, when it went in. Nice. So what, what we're going to be doing is a vacuum test to just check that uh, the valves aren't leaking. Okay, apparently that's all good. Okay, so uh, we're going to crack on and fit this new cylinder head. That's all got to be um, cleaned up. We've got some uh, um, nail varnish remover, acetone. That's going to um, get all the grease and uh, hopefully make sure that those surfaces are as clean as possible. Something that I've decided to do on council really is um, deglaze the inside of the pistons with a special tool that I've managed to lay my hands on. By all accounts there's no point having the top of the engine off and not doing this particular job so a bit of a delay because we had to wait for this tool to turn up for a couple of days but it's here now. Uh, so uh, an awful lot of kind of cleaning over got here we've got there. our new cylinder head cylinder head gasket we've got an exhaust manifold gasket we've got a um, water I think it's a um, thermostat housing gasket because that came off. These things are called stretch bolts. Very simply, whenever you change your head, you have to put new bolts in, three different sizes of bolts, which means uh, three lots of new bolts. Very simply, as the engine heats up, cools down, heats up, cools down, these bolts stretch. So uh, whenever you replace a head, you replace the bolts. Um, the last head that we had had a, a diesel heater glow plug stuck in it. Um, so uh, I decided to buy uh, four more of those and this is the uh, temperature sensor that goes in the uh, cylinder head so a new one of those so it's never just you know just the big part there's always half a dozen little parts that uh, have to go along with it but that's all of our parts this is the tool that I'm going to be uh, using to clean the uh, pistons I'm going to position the piston at the bottom of the piston, uh, it goes on a power drill, you just zip it in and out and ultimately what you want the inside of the uh, pistons to be isn't smooth and shiny, it's kind of a sort of uh, slightly rough matte finish to them and this tool just has uh, very fine stones. Uh, it's spring loaded, uh, works on centrifugal force, you just put it into the piston on a power drill and um, it takes off all of the like I say, glaze polish uh, and returns it to a surface that is uh, better for the uh, engine, better for combustion, hopefully uh, just a little bit of a, uh, a brush up. So there's all our parts, we're going to make a start, see if we can put the BOV back together. Okay, so what we're going to try and do here is what's called deglaze the cylinders. So just a light sort of WD-40 in there, going to work that into the kind of metal surface and then get in there with my uh, deglazing tool. Uh, I just tweak the ignition so that uh, two of the cylinders are in the highest point and two of the cylinders are in the lowest point and then I'll just swap over and do the other ones.
So these two bolts I've just put on a cable tie, I'm going to slide them in with the head because the bulkhead sort of comes over the top of the bolt and you can't just drop the bolts in once the uh, head's in place. So I've just uh, lifted them up slightly from uh, protruding through the other side, held them with a cable tie, that's going to get me out of Wow, time. so uh, as discussed I've managed to get the cylinder head in, I would turn around and say uh, if you can find someone to give you a hand uh, that would be a good idea. Cylinder head is so heavy to hold the point of balance and lower it exactly in place yourself is nigh on impossible. So uh, what you're trying to do with this one is sort of put it in at about sort of 45 degrees so the back goes in first and then lower it down into place which uh, is um, far from easy. The temptation is of course to once you get it almost in to sort of slide it on the face and that's the last thing you want to do to scratch or damage the uh, face but I've kind of done my best, I've got it in place. I put the bolts in so remember three different sizes of bolts and we got all the kind of torque settings and the angles to tighten these bolts up that's all got to happen but uh, got the cylinder head in got myself a drink it is boiling and um, taking the bonnet off really made the job a little bit simpler but let's uh, show you where I am so got the cylinder head in um, just uh, um, put all the bolts in the right holes really just sort of finger tight so that um, I took up a couple of threads now I'm just going to get a torque wrench on them and um, just uh, put them down you know so they're just about in place sort of thing before I start talking things up most important thing whew, uh, lemon barley of course it's Wimbledon here in the UK you can't drink anything uh, uh, but uh, barley water this week uh, so uh, that's where we are with the engine, massive step forward, like I say, and um, got to put the thermostat housing back on, start tightening bolts up, um, very methodical, bolts have got to be tightened up in exactly the right sequence, and all of this of course has got to be done when all of the components are stone cold. So um, that's it really, going to crack on, that's where I am so far. So I told you about those little dowels and how you can't fit a cylinder head without them. Well I had three, I had two brand new ones and one from the old head and I couldn't find the, the spare one. So I put it all together, my big fear was that it had dropped into one of the pistons or one of the cylinders and so it's something you just can't take a chance on. I couldn't find it so I took it all apart to make sure that that shim wasn't sitting inside the cylinder which would have just smashed the engine to pieces. Uh, so now I know the cylinders are clear, got my two dowels in place, I haven't got the head back but uh, you don't know how hard it was to take it off and double check on a day as hot as today. So hopefully this is where our sort of meticulous strip down, wrapping up parts and uh, labelling everything is going to pay us uh, dividends when we come to reassembly. So I've taken it out of the cling film, I've still got these bolts in the end just to kind of hold everything in place and hopefully that's just slide a treat right onto the new cylinder. need to share something with you. So this is a push rod and this is a stem cap. Let me show you what both of those look like. That's a stem cap. These are our push rods. So if you remember, we marked them up. So I'll just take uh, one out. Okay, so the push rods go in these holes here. But whatever you do, don't drop a stem cap that goes on there. Down the hole, that the push rod goes in which is what I just did and luckily I had a kind of magnetic tip pickup that uh, managed to pull it out but had I not got away with that ladies and gentlemen I would have had to take the head all off of the engine again 
which meant uh, replacing the stretch bolts, which probably would have been another morning or afternoon's work. Um, so I guess put your uh, push rods in before you even get your stem caps out of the box. But uh, thank you, Lord. Uh, he was smiling at me then. So uh, this uh, bit of wiring kind of runs along the top of the cylinder head and when the cylinder head cooked, so did the wiring. It's kind of melted the plastic sheathing off, but the uh, wiring seems to be intact. So I'm going to clean it up a bit. Then I'm going to uh, wrap it up in the appropriate tape. And then I'm going to put another piece of uh, trunking uh, with some cable ties over the top of it. Wow, I don't even know what time it is, but uh, I would guess it's about um, 8 o'clock in the evening. Started about well, maybe 12, 1 o'clock, I suppose, a little bit of running around this morning before I got stuck into the truck. But um, three quarters of the way through getting it all together, I've got to. Um, torque down uh, a few bolts that I'm not sure of the torque settings I'm going to go on the internet tonight and check those zip those down tomorrow a few uh, pipes got put the um, air filter and the uh, turbo uh, charger um, hose work back but um, still got the injectors to put in still got the new uh, glow plugs diesel heaters and um, I think that's it really. I've lost one bolt out of the whole job. Uh, don't quite know where it is. I think maybe it's still in the old um, cylinder head that we um, left at the engineering workshop. So I'll have to pop back and um, see if there is a manifold uh, stud um, still in it. But, um, of course, we're not going to know if any of this is going to work until we turn the key, and that's not going to be until tomorrow. My wife has just bought me a uh, lovely burger. I'm going to have a cup of tea, put my tools away, and uh, crack on with a little bit more of it tomorrow. Um, I guess this is where I say, uh, please, uh, thumbs up, like, share, subscribe, and if you're watching on Facebook, please follow. As always, any comments, love to hear them.